Hi everyone, I'm Elaine Quijano. It's good to be with you. Thanks for joining us. We are a little less than half an hour away from the start of the second night of the virtual Democratic National Convention. Tonight, the party aims to bridge generations from former President Bill Clinton to Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Michelle Obama's closing speech last night praised Joe Biden as a man of good character while attacking President Trump by name. It was an unprecedented move for a former first lady. Tonight's theme is leadership matters. Like yesterday, some speakers will be coming in live, while other messages will be pre-recorded. For more, let's bring in Michigan State Representative Mari Manugian. She has been given a speaking slot for tonight and has been called a rising star in the Democratic Party. Representative, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So I just want to start with a little bit of background. Politically, uh, part of the area you represent, specifically suburban Oakland County, was for decades a GOP stronghold. Why do you think that you were selected to speak on this night, and what will your message be? Sure. So I think there's a couple of big messages uh, that I want to make sure that the American people hear from us tonight here in Oakland County. The first is that uh, we have brought change to this county um, up and down the ticket. Uh, I was elected in 2018. I grew up in this district and um, am very... And I'm very, very proud to represent the hometown that I grew up in. And I am uh, just want to say that, you know, times have changed here. Republican voters who used to vote uh, straight Republican have seen their party le uh, leave them. Uh, the values that they hold dear, uh, being, you know, good neighbors to one another and being kind, uh, that's simply not the values they see reflected in the current version of the Republican Party. And so uh, we've seen them uh, cross over to vote for Democrats, uh, people who are who are coming to them with kitchen table issues and giving them solutions to the problems they see very, uh, very clearly in their everyday lives. Well, we have seen a shift in your party uh, to the more progressive sort of flank recently. How do you navigate that, where you are right now? How have you adapted to that? Sure. Well, this is the one thing I will say is that I you know, was raised by a union leader. My dad was a union utility worker who uh, worked in bucket trucks throughout the city of Detroit and in uh, all different parts of our state, making sure we were keeping the lights on throughout our community. And uh, my mother was a vocational rehabilitation counselor. So I have, you know, two really, really strong uh, parents, really blessed to have them uh, raise me with values that I hold near and dear. And so uh, whether, you know, you identify as a progressive or as a moderate, you have a home in this Democratic Party, and our values are reflective of that. And so for me, as a young person, uh, there are some issues that I see that we have to have very bold, progressive policy positions on. Um, and I'm not afraid to, to take that position. And, and this is the thing. I knocked over 10,000 doors personally in my district in 2018. We knocked 50,000 doors as a team. And what voters uh, took from us was that I was going to be, I was going to have firm con uh, convictions, that I was going to be true to my values and my roots. Um, and they've entrusted me with that. And I'm, I'm hopeful that they'll continue to do the same thing here in the 2020 election as well. What about from a generational perspective? As I understand it, you are 27 years old. Is that correct? Um, what That's specifically correct. is it that you? What is it that you specifically want to see from a potential Biden-Harris administration? So aside from all of the uh, big issues we have at hand here, I don't want people to lose sight of the fact that we are still in the middle of a uh, global public health crisis um, and that, you know, our country is still struggling uh, with making sure we can get folks the unemployment benefits that they need, making sure that our frontline workers have everything they need to be safe when they're serving their communities. So that's incredibly important. I think that's very much something I'd like to see the Biden-Harris administration center on. But also, something that we know to be true from this keynote address is that the Biden-Harris administration will center young voices at the table. And this is not just a uh, this is not just a game, or this is not just sort of a symbol. This is true. Uh, I'm in contact, close contact with the Biden campaign very regularly, and the, this is a very genuine outreach. So I know that the voices of young folks are going to be at the table during this administration. 
Uh, President Trump, as you know, nearly won Michigan in 2016. Our CBS News polling is the state favoring Joe Biden currently by eight points. What do you think is going to be the biggest thing on the minds of Michigan voters come November? I realize it's a little bit of a crystal ball question, because uh, that's still, <laughs> at least given our sense of time and space today, in some people's minds might seem a very long time from now. Anything can happen between now and November. But you're someone who has lived there, grew up there. What do you think is going to be most important to people in Michigan come November? Hey, this is the question that is on the minds of voters uh, every time they go to the ballot box. And this is, you know, this election, it couldn't be truer. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? And as far as I can tell in my district, the answer is no. We are still dealing with a global pandemic, uh, and our country has just been uh, so grossly underprepared because the response was just so collapsed. And it's just so unfortunate that at every turn there were opportunities to put us on the right path, and the Trump administration simply was unable to do so or unwilling to do so. And so I know that voters in my district see that there is a clear choice here, and that the choice for bold leadership and leadership during times of uh, crisis, that Joe Biden is the one that led us out of the, uh, the auto collapse, uh, and that he's the one who's been there for Michiganders, and I know that, that, that Michigan will be delivered for Joe Biden come November. You know, uh, polling has also shown an enthusiasm gap when you talk about people supporting Joe Biden versus uh, those supporting President Trump. And we heard from former First Lady Michelle Obama yesterday that in order for Joe Biden to come out on top, of course, voter turnout needs to be high. What do you think is the key to making that actually happen? The key to making voter turnout actually happen is meeting voters where they are. And whether that means, you know, socially distanced lit drops so you can make sure that your message is getting out to voters or like my team has been doing uh, very regularly, making phone calls to voters, encouraging them to vote. Uh, making sure that folks who have absentee ballots know that they need to turn those in early and drop them off at those drop boxes so they don't risk them getting lost in the mail or having them delivered late. Uh, just making sure that candidates up and down the ticket, people like me in the state legislatures, uh, anybody who's even above in Congress and beyond, that we are doing voter turnout and we are engaging folks where they are. That's going to be critical this election cycle. All right, Michigan State Representative Mari Manugian. Representative, thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me.